Hi everyone, welcome to Tall Tree Stud, right in the heartland of Canterbury Harness Racing and of course home to the outstanding pacer Master Mood who swept all before him through the mid-1980s. Trained by Kevin Williams, of course his wife Bonnie Williams and uh, she already had Harness Racing royalty in her blood. Her father Cecil Devine driving no less than six New Zealand Cup winners. We're going to go inside, catch up on a little bit of history and uh, talk more about the Devine Williams dynasty. I have to say that Dad was never keen for us to be involved. In fact, he was quite anti woman in harness racing. Till he gave Lorraine Watson a drive and she won a race at Eddington. And, uh, Things changed a wee bit. Yeah, well, that caused a bit of fuss at home, I have to say. <laughs> of course, your father, being uh, the late, great C.C. Devine, uh, renowned horseman worldwide, really, and a man who dominated our greatest race, uh, the New Zealand Cup through the 50s. Uh, just what was it like growing up... Uh, with he and your mum? Well it was, I had a great childhood really, you know, I couldn't uh, complain about that and um, I always loved the horses, I suppose that was born and bred in us. Um, and um, much and all as he was, uh, you know, renowned to be a hard man, as far as family was concerned he was, he was a great person really. Uh, we had to toe the line though, there was no nonsense. <laughs> Tasmanian born, hence his nickname, mm -hmm. Tazzy. Uh, he came to New Zealand because his brother couldn't at one stage uh, with a couple of horses, was supposedly here for a month, never left. He maintained that mum knew he was coming and was on the wharf with a lasso. Uh, <laughs> yes, he did, and I don't know that he had any intentions of staying when he came, but um, uh, he always said that he wanted to be a lawyer. That was his aim in life, but growing up in the Depression years, of course, there was no money. He was one of five kids, and pretty hard upbringing I think and um, so when he got out here and probably saw the lifestyle and thought well maybe it was worth a try. That was back in 1936, yes. uh, it was a tough time for, yes. for a whole lot of people, uh, what did he talk to you about in terms of uh, how he got involved in harness racing from there and, um, and just how difficult it was? Well, he stayed on, as I said, with those horses that had come for the Inter-Dominions. And, um, yeah, I think it was very hard even then for him to break in and get started. He started off in Prebleton when he started training on his own. He worked for Vic Leeming for some time. And then he started off in a property at Prebleton that belonged to my grandfather, who actually had the old garage at Prebleton, and uh, trained from there. And, um, yeah, I think it was a fair old battle, but he was very tenacious about most things, so... Stuck to it and yeah, eventually. Hmm. Yeah, the record book suggests that through the 50s to have five New Zealand Cup winners, um, it's never been matched in that period or, or in any period for that matter. And of course, it all began with Van Diemen in, in 51. That's right, yes. Yeah. So um, he was uh, very much into those stayers. He loved the stayers, and I think it was a challenge to him to to win those major races. and um, The Cup was the pinnacle for him though, wasn't it? Absolutely, yes it was. And um, you know, he, yes, he really did enjoy getting them ready for those big races. And um, yeah, we probably all suffered a bit when Cup time was coming around. Um, but um, he always had, you know, good staff around him and only ever trained about 12 horses. And um, as I said, concentrated on stayers really, although he did have some good young horses as well but um, yeah he did enjoy getting them ready for those big ones. And there was a Royal Cup? There was a Royal Cup. I think that was probably a highlight for him meeting the Queen. He was very much a royalist and um, and so was mum and um, yeah he got a real thrill out of that you know. Yeah. He used to say I never dreamed when I was a kid that I'd ever meet the Queen. No. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that must have been an amazing family moment. Thunder yes. in 56. Yes. Yes. Thunder was, um, came from uh, Parnassus, the lady at Rutherford owned him, and um, that was a good part of my life, was going up there for school holidays and staying on the farm and riding the horses. Their property went right out to the coast, and we'd go out there at the time. Bruce Francis was working up there, and it's people that you know we knew later on through the industry. And um, when he won the cup, um, Eric, the next week, put on a big garden party in the lawn, and you know, they were that sort of people. Yeah. And, Fond uh, memories of that sort of oh, thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It was a great time, yeah, it was. Now, the next set of circumstances led to the three-time New Zealand Cup winner in false step, and arguably the history books 
your father is as much renowned for those New Zealand Cup wins as the incident at Addington Raceway with uh, Mr Lytton. Exactly, yes. It wasn't much fun really. <laughs> I can actually remember that quite vividly, waiting for him outside the stripes room under that old, where the horses used to walk It was to the fourth day there. of the New Zealand Cup meeting, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then it became quite a drama because um, they appealed, of course, um, and he had a lawyer preparing the case for him. About three nights before the case was due to be heard, the lawyer rang and said, I'm not taking the case. So he then ended up getting somebody suggested that he try Peter Mann, and that's who took the case, and he became a lifetime friend of Dad's. Um, yeah. They didn't win, of course, against Harness Racing. They both got six months. So. Yeah, six months suspension yes. uh, for two of the biggest names in the game. That's right. Uh, of course, uh, Jack Lytton drove false step. Yes. And ironically, mm. the next year in the New Zealand Cup, your father had trained the horse uh, for a few months at that stage, and uh, he, he won the first of three. That's right. Uh, false step came to uh, Dad's property through Bill Cook from Ashburton, who came to see him and said that... Um, uh, they had to find somewhere for him to go. He was a stallion and needed turning out, and, and evidently Jack Lytton obviously didn't want to train him anymore. Um, and Dad said, no, I'm finished with this game. I'm probably not going to pick it up again. And uh, Bill came back. I can remember him coming back in saying, look, they're desperate for somewhere for him to go. I think he was aiming at Dad training him, knowing that if he asked him that, he wouldn't do it. So eventually he said, oh, well, you can put him in the front paddock if you like. And so the story goes from there. Hmm. Just back to that flying stakes, that's the race it was yes. in. Um, what do you recall about the media hype around it? Uh, because it, it was a significant moment uh, in, in, in harness racing history, wasn't it? It was. And I still, as his daughter, don't really know what blew it up as it did. 250 think, metres from home. Exactly. They, um, I think they'd been tussling the whole way through that meeting right through in the races that you know and then it just yeah happened I guess I don't know and um, yeah it was awful actually I mean as a kid you kind of feel embarrassed about it all don't you um, and the one of the things that was quite interesting was Bounce Lytton, Leone Lytton, Jack's younger daughter was a very good friend of mine so and it all got quite um, you know people seem to think that we shouldn't be friends because of this episode but anyway our friendship continued and um it was, yes, and of course the media, well, as you know, the media loves something to get a hold of and run with it, and um, and yes, it was yeah, it was pretty dramatic, all right. It still comes up time and time again, doesn't it? Yeah, it still is to <laughs> this yeah, day. Exactly. And of course, false step, the next two years, he became the second horse only ever to achieve three New Zealand Cups, and um, I'm sure that it came up each time he was being exactly. set for a cup again. Exactly, yeah. And um, yes, he was a lovely horse, and the guy that owned him, Jim Smythe, um, and his wife were great people, you know, really good. And um, yeah, we had lots of good times with them as well. So. There will never be another one like you. There will never be another one who can do the things you do. Oh, will you give another chance? Will you try a little try? Please stop and you remember we were together. a certain